folks, John Cordisco back again. Round one of Norway Chess 2015. It's a series of three tournaments in the Grand Chess Tour. A lot of money at stake. Beautiful, beautiful Norway. The other two tournaments are going to be the Singfield Cup, one of my personal favorites, in St. Louis, Missouri. And lastly, the London Chess Classic, of course, in London, England. They call that the Grand Chess Tour, and it actually it is. What a huge, uh, what great players of the top ten. I think there's two missing. It's going to be all the players. Uh, nine players have agreed to play in it. And one alternate player uh, picked by the organizers for each tournament. In this case, in Norway Chess, the alternate player is Ivan Ludwig Hammer from Norway. Magnus Carlsen's buddy, strong player, about 2660. 2677. Anyway, let's get to it. White is Carl Nakamura. Now in the live rating list, number two in the world against Jan Ludwig Hammer from Norway. Nakamura is white, Hammer is black. Now that's a hell of a name for a chess player. Hammer. You gotta love it. Bishop G2. Of course, it's uh, English. Knight takes. Knight. Let's go breeze through the opening a little bit. We're not really here for opening theory. Bishop e7. Bishop b2. f6. Might seem like a weakening move, but it really isn't. Because this diagonal here is not going to be much of a threat. And it reinforces that e5 pawn. d4. Pawn. Knight e1. Interesting move there. Now the computer... Liked knight on f to d2. I'm not so sure about that, but that is a computer. And number two was knight to e1, and that's what how Carl played. f5, here come the black pawns. Jan Ludwig, I gotta give it to him. He's going for it against Nakamura. f3, pawn takes. Knight takes is much preferable over bishop takes or rook takes, and that is the correct move. Knight up. That's a really good spot for that knight. Being that black controls the e4, you can't really chase the knight off. That's a good spot. Queen of d3. All right. We got a game. It's a tiny, minute advantage for white. So we'll call it even. I think Hammer's done very well to get to this point. Castles. e3 for a Carl just to reinforce that pawn. Bishop up. A3. I like that move a lot. Computer likes knight to A3 or knight to C3. But I do like A3. He's got to guard this square here. Can't blame him a bit. A very human move. Queen to D7. It's starting to get complicated. And we've got two pawns on each side missing all the minor pieces. White's knight on b1 is yet to be developed, but it'll be coming up soon. It, this is this is beyond me, to be honest with you. It's uh, this is hard hard position to even judge what to do. Finally, Carl develops his queen's knight. Rook comes over. Rook getting the semi-open file. Bishop f6 is the computer's choice. Knight to b6. And queen e8 all within the same score. Knight to b6 seems reasonable. Pawn up. a6. I do have to say, tiny advantage for black. The computer likes the position. It says that black has a very active position. And I think... Young Jan Ludwig has done very well to get to this point. Knight to b3. I do have to say as a side note, and I guess they had a, what they call a confessional, where each player during the game can go into the confessional and record a little small video of what they're thinking. Now, I know a Carl didn't go in, but Magnus Carlsen was the first one in, and they're probably going to show it later, either after the game or later down the road. 
what they were thinking, how they're feeling. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, of course, if they ever had my confessionals, it'd be like, what the hell am I thinking? <laughs> but anyway, it's, we'll see if they come up on the internet, the confessionals. Now, this is the part of the game where I struggle. One, it's a complicated position. And two is, there's just so much here. I mean, I give these guys a lot of credit. I'm 15, 1600 rated player, USCF rated, US Chess Federation rated, and maybe I'm just not that strong of a player, but I always seem to struggle right around this part of the game, uh, the mid middle game. Knight to a4, before hammer, hitting the bishop. Bishop just goes back to a1. That bishop's not really stuck there, he's doing a lot of work. He's covering. This square, this square, and he's guarding this pawn. He's doing okay. Bishop d5. Knight. I think if Carl is looking to go knight and knight here, which would be very good if he could place a knight there on e5. Queen moves the rook over. Knight b6, moves the knight back. And this is a good time, I think, for Carl to break open the center, which he does with e4. King to h1 is a close second for the computer. But he goes e4, wants to break it open. Pawn takes. Knight takes. Now, this is an interesting choice by Hammer. It's one of the moves in the computer. As you can see, though, of course, that knight's being pinned, but it's not really no danger. He just moves the queen, and there's more than enough protection on it. Rook comes over. Knight to e5. Now, that pawn takes. You're going to see now that e pawn for white is going to play a key, key role. Now this bishop's alive. Really alive. This bishop's in a good spot here. I think O'Carroll's looking pretty good. Now, the computer only gives him about a quarter of a pawn advantage, but I think it's a lot easier to play white at this point. C6. Bishop D4, hitting the knight, forcing the knight to retreat. Bishop F3. Rook F8. Now, of course, young Jan Ludwig wants to take that F file. Baker can't blame him. It's on White's king. Bishop H5. Queen. Queen's going to be running out of spaces here pretty soon. Bishop. Queen E6. Now look at this. Look, the queen can't, the queen can't go here. Can't go here. Can't go here. Bishop f4, reinforce that pawn. a5. I'm not so sure about that. The computer likes h6 for black with a dead even game or queen to f5 with a dead even game. He decides to go a5. I think that was too casual of a move, frankly. Here got queen to f5 after a bishop, queen, bishop, it's dead drawn. But after a5, knight to g5. Now the queen's really running out of, out of squares. Queen can't go here, 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 can't go here. Has to go to f5. Bishop g4, he the queen again, queen g6. And that queen's going to get chased all over the place. He goes back, he repeats a little bit here. Now we're on move 35, and the time control is on the 40th move, so I think Carl May was just trying to get closer to time control. He was getting a little bit lower on time. He, he was quite low. It was less than, I think, 10 minutes left, and Jan Ludwig had quite a bit of time, so I think he was just trying to get closer to the time control. E6. That's the killer, I think. Look at all the pressure on the F7 square. Look at all that. Really something. Knight to f6. And I think this is where young Ludwig, the pressure's getting to him. Bishop checks. 
Beautiful square there. King moves. Rook to F1. Man, look at this. Look, look at the pieces. Here. Man, oh man, oh man. Look at that pile. And this is where I think Young Ligwig crumbles under pressure. Computer likes Bishop B3. Now, during the analysis, I watched it on Livestream.com. They had Jennifer Shahadi, former women's U.S. champion, and Alejandro Ramirez, grandmaster from the United States, and Maurice Ashley doing the commentary. And they were using a computer, at least Maurice was, to do some commentary. And that bishop, the B3, was found. Now, in all fairness, that bishop will be in the middle of nowhere. That's the move to basically draw it. But he finds a second best move. Knight to e4. And this is where I think he goes wrong. Knight takes. Queen takes, of course. Threatening all kinds of havoc. Threatening mate, actually. Queen takes. Bishop takes. Now, this is a move that a Carl had to find. Now, I'm watching the computer off screen. Rook F to E1 is the computer's choice. But I think I give a Carl a lot of credit. He found this move. It's not that easy to find. Stop the video now and see if you can find the move that a Carl made. He went Bishop E3. Now, here's the problem. There's nothing black can do about Bishop here. How is he going to defend the bishop? If bishop takes, rook takes, how is he going to defend this pawn push? He can't. So he panics and plays A takes, bishop anyway, rook to D2, rook F to E1. Give you an idea. Bishop takes what happened. Rook, king, rook checks, rook f3, bishop takes, and white gets mated. So you have to be careful, even when you're winning. After rook f to e1, the bishop takes, rook takes, rook checks, king to f1, black is doomed. He's got to make, try to push his b pawn. But it's not going to matter. Rook takes. B2. Rook D1. Rook takes. Now this is a very important move here. King to G1. Might draw. He has to go Rook C to E5. That's the move. Rook checks. King G2. Queen. Rook takes. Rook takes. And here comes the final sequence. E7. There's nothing he can do. Rook to A8. And he underpromoted. He went pawn to E8. Rook comes out the same. Rook takes and Rook takes mate. Now, normally they don't let an individual to re resign, but young. Jan Ludwig Hammer does a lot of work with the in chess in Norway, which is exploding, of course, because of the Magnus Carlsen being world champion. And it's in all the schools. He's quite popular, and I think that was more for the public, especially the young kids in Norway, to watch the mate sequence. He did that just for the uh, publicity of it, so to speak, and just to show the hundreds of thousands of people in Norway. It was on Norway Norwegian television live. Uh, what a nice mate that was. Anyway, folks, kind of a heartbreaker for Hammer, but yay to Carl. He wins round one. Carl's had a hell of a year. And this puts him at number two in the live rating list in the world. Anyway, folks, I want to give you a little setup here. There's a Magnus Carlsen Topalov game from this round that you will not believe what happens at the end. Un freaking believable i'll have that coming up soon tonight anyway folks i want you all to remember if you think chess is just a game you're not playing it right take care folks bye bye